someone was asking me the other day, what's the difference between the RGB Super Bundle and the Maps Super Bundle? Right, because those are yeah, the two most popular ones. What is the difference, Sal? Uh, the difference between the two things, Justin. Yeah. Uh, the RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Those are the core programs that we offer, and we recommend people follow them in order. So you start with Maps Anabolic. When you finish that program, which is about three months, then you move on to Maps Performance. You finish that program, and then you move on to Maps Aesthetic. And remember, each of the Maps programs are broken down, broken up into phases. So you actually have like three different types of workouts in each one of those programs. Actually, Mass Performance has, has four, four, yeah, yeah. four different types of workouts. You follow all of them. It's about nine months of exercise programming. Phenomenal. Great combination. Now, Maps, the Maps Super Bundle takes it a step further and includes Maps Anywhere, which is our equipment-free Maps program, which a lot of people I'm, I'm hearing now like to use that as a bridge. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they're going Maps Anabolic, which is obviously a lot of it's in the gym or working out with weights, then doing maps anywhere and doing it at home, mm -hmm. then finishing that and going into maps performance. And they keep, they keep injecting it in between the core maps programs and people are getting great results with that. It also includes maps prime. Now maps prime includes what we call a compass test. And this is a self-assessment tool and it helps you identify parts of your body that need uh, more work uh, with fortification sessions or, and, it helps you design your own priming sessions. Now, priming is what you do before your workout. And believe it or not, it has a tremendous impact on the effectiveness of the workout that you're about to do. For example, if you prime properly, you'll get into your squats and you'll feel them differently. Muscles will fire better. You'll get better connectivity, better recruitment patterns. And of course, that all leads to better results. Better results. So that's the MAP Super Bundle. Now, this month, enroll in either one of those and we're going to throw in for free the No BS Six Pack Formula, which is a program for your core, core training, and our nutrition and fasting guides. So you get all that for free for enrolling in either one of those programs. And you can find all of this at mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time. How many reviews? How many reviews did we get? Did we get 15. 50? 15 oh. reviews. We're always right around 15, that. 50. It's all right. That's it's, not bad. It's good. Not it's, too bad. Yeah. That's not bad. It's pretty crazy right. how like consistent that is. You it's know, okay. 15 to 20. Are they the same people or are these all new people? No, they have to be new, right? That's though? Great. I think they're new. I don't know. Different the, names. I, know. Yeah, I feel like sometimes. I know some people, like sometimes. I got a guy who inboxed me and he says, I've left a ton of reviews yeah. and I haven't got a shirt yet. I'm like, wait, is he got a So do they just I keep appreciate adding the hustle, though. to the bottom? Yeah. Do we just keep getting, or do they erase the old review and put the new one in? I'm, That's the question. It'd be really interesting to see how that works. Yeah, to see if people are trying to game know. the yeah. system. Right. Hey, look, your odds of winning a t-shirt are pretty- The numbers keep increasing, though. The overall right. numbers keep yeah. increasing. Well, yeah. here, here you go, cheaters. Go ahead, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> we just handed you a playbook. I don't think any of these people are cheaters. Not, hey, if, you're not, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Words to live by. That's right. All right, uh, four shirts are going out, starting with Shady5925. Oh, oh, you mean well, to tell me that guy did You mean to tell me he didn't Listen, cheat? Listen, he's a trustworthy man. That, mother, a, that motherfucker uh, cheated to get this T-shirt. Give him a T-shirt, though, for trying. <laughs> Not trying. He did it. He did it. <laughs> Next up is Super American Eagle Squadron. Well, fuck you! Yeah! I feel like I they were, like, shoot a gun. I feel like they were honest. Yeah. That's Next, the honest guy. <laughs> I think I think they're America. on. I think they're on to something right now. I think they're starting to find out that Doug picks the names that we like. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, uh -huh. wow. That's that's, that's my tactic. only method. Mm. Next up is Moon Gazer with a double Z. Mm. So it might be Moon Gazer. Moon <laughs> Gazer Beam. Something. And then the final one is Jackson C will overcome. C will overcome. You will do it. That's not you that will overcome. We should start. We should start attaching which one is a fan of what. Like the, the moon gazer is definitely a Sal fan. Yeah, Sal fan. You guys sure. don't gaze Sal, at the moon. Sal gets all the moon gazers. <laughs> I love mo gazing, uh, yeah. gazing at yeah. them. Is that all of them done? That's it. Is that like the butt. Where do they got to go? They got to send their name. The one I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Got to send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Boom. Blingo, blingo. We'll hook you up, son. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. The little boy blew the man on the moon. When you're coming home, son, I don't know when. We'll get together then. Come on, we'll dude. We'll have a good time then. Come on, dude. Dude, that was fucking good. That's an enough. Why are you going to be such a dick, bro? I'm not. I think, that was I on think whoever tells you it's good is a dick. <laughs>
I think someone's someone's lying to you. So bad. Somebody's lying. Someone's I'm, lying. I'm just trying to be your friend and tell you the truth. Whoa, whoa! Nice recover there, Doug. That was cool. Wow. Doug almost broke his hip. He did. <laughs> you got fast. You got some fast moves, Doug. Must be that maps. Catlight re- reflexes there. Must be that maps program. What do we got going I up? I can tell you trained with a good trainer for oh, years. For years. With the best trainer. I don't know about best. Yes, best. You can't hear. Yeah. Better than average. Better than yeah. the rest. Justin, get on the mic. Fuck you. Listen, let me give you guys some advice oh, right here. I feel like I feel okay. like Justin's been fucking up. Take a lot the little bit that you what? know and forget about it. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> ah, you guys missed me. <laughs> Take, take, <laughs> take the little bit that you know yeah. and forget everything. <laughs> you know, I want to do that. Words wanna, of wisdom. I want to like speak at a conference yeah. and but be like the last speaker and go up and be like, okay, everybody, <laughs> listen, forget everything, everything you've learned listen. at this conference. I up know until you don't now, know a lot. Just yeah. forget everything. Forget all of it. Yeah, forget it's all, all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to tell you the shit you need to remember. I'm drop some wisdom on just, you, man. son. Just fuck with everybody. I'm about to give it to you. Hey, that's, that's uh, some ancient wisdom. I want to hear about your Easter's. Post Easter, I want to hear about your Easter. What did you do on Easter? I drove around and did the 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 family thing. You yeah, did it again, it was, dude. You know, you know what sucks is when you're a guy in a great relationship and you feel like a divorcee because you have to go drive around to like multiple families on oh, holidays. That. Why does that? Why does that happen to me, dude? What do you mean? I didn't fuck up any of my relationships or marriage. Why do I have to be the one that drives? You gotta on? share time, man. Man, it's, it's, it's a family, mother. Family, it's a family. motherfucker. Wait, how many houses did you go well, to? It's for not sure? just three. But you know what? That's the point. Is that like Katrina's family is like so rad? They're like bring everybody over. But then my family, you know, it's everybody all exclusive. Yeah, my family doesn't like other parts of their fa- their own family. They're dysfunctional. Yeah. Oh, totally. Right. Mm. So they <clears throat> they put the fun in dysfunctional. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> not so much. A little fun bit of the funk. Yeah. yeah, so I went. We, Dysfunctional. We, we drove. <laughs> we rode at the library. Funky. We drove out to uh, Oakdale, which is the cowboy capital of the world. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> right. True story. I have some Texas listeners right now that I'll disagree with you. <laughs> well, that's a fuck it. There's a sign that says that when you come It's pretty much a fact, right? If you put a sign up in front of the. the it says ta- that? Yeah, it says I mean, that. It says it. the country capital. Like the no, it says the cowboy coffee. capital of the world. Of the world? Cowboy capital of the world. That's a confident. It's very confident. That's a very cocky town. Do they even co- have chaps? Yeah. Uh, well, they have one of the biggest rodeos there. Okay. Oakdale Rodeo is pretty well known. Um, Fair s- enough. For, especially for California. You know, obviously, if we're comparing to Texas, Texas is. Uh, on a whole other level. But for the most part, even a lot of those guys come up to this rodeo. It's a big rodeo. Mm. Uh, anyways, I was in Oakdale. See, I saw my um, my mother and her new boyfriend. I met him, and I got to... So this is your first time meeting him? Yes. Yes. Mm. I just... I, she they Recent. They're new. They just met on... Uh, what kind of handshake did he have? Yeah, that's a good question, you know what Justin. I mean? it was it everything? Yeah, you no, know, it was good. You know, I think sometimes I know they tell you to good. give. No, well, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the over firm handshake. I think uh, it screams insecurity. No, that, well, that's that, what that, I mean. It, it still determines. There's it. Like, a does right. He, does he let you go more firm? That's why I said there's right. a right amount. That's yeah. why I said it was right. Like it was a the thumbs in the right position. If yeah. I if if I doesn't add a little tickle. At the end. If I think about your handshake after you do it, you did something wrong. Like if it mm. made an impression on me, like it was too soft or it was too hard. Something's wrong. Did he double fist it? Or no, he didn't. It, what well, it was was that would have been aggressive. It was good. It was good because I didn't think about it afterwards. If I if someone shakes my hand and they do like the tickle, like Justin said, that's really yeah. weird. Or they do, or like if that. they like, like literally shake, like they go up and down. It's like, come on, yeah. guy. Yeah, right. What are we doing here? Or they do the yeah. grip, like he grabs my hand and he grips yeah. me like just he, to let like me know, the claws. Like, ah, like he's you know, digging which his fingers I, I feel you. like some men tend to, you know, I'm a six foot three, two hundred and thirty pound dude, so a lot of times. It gets sized up by other men. And this he's six five, so he's a big dude. So yeah. he's not a little guy. And uh, other big guys have a tendency to want to do that when they meet me. But yep. he was pretty good. So he what do you guys okay, talk about? Right. How does this work? That's, what do you guys talk about? Impression. It did, well, no, so he didn't hug you. No, yeah, we don't hug. I just met him, dude. So, and he's only a one month boyfriend. You don't get a hug from me for. Oh, well, I don't time. know. He's just you yeah, know, yeah, 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 maybe. Out. No, he's no. at the Easter party. Adam's hard to get. He did. He did make the. He made Easter Sunday at church. You know what I'm saying? So that's a big step in the the relationship. So what do you guys mom. talk about then? Are you like, hey? It's very awkward. You know, what my hey, mom man. did. We literally we we met there, right? And then we go to church for uh, Sunday uh, for Easter Sunday, and the the church that she goes to has like this really nice like. Uh, buffet area, and they actually have like a little mini Starbucks almost inside the church. It's pretty rad. Church has come a long way since I was going as a kid. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> it's quite the spectacle now. Like 
plasma TVs everywhere, and you can see like the. Yeah, I noticed that too. I went Dude, it's Saturday, a, it's and I was legit. like, this is a full blown production. It was, bro. Yeah. There was lights both going on. Both of you guys went to church. Jumping. You guys yeah. both went to church. Well, well, Saturday. Yeah, I mean, Justin and I are going to heaven, so I mean, we we, we pair of course, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, we're we're there, and so team my, fireproof. We get there, and my mom literally. That's <laughs> right. <tries, tries. laughs> Yeah, that's, why, that's why we don't sit too close to you ever, yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly. 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 We're a little bit off, yeah, you know. Yeah. You guys will yeah, be bored. Yeah. From you. Yeah, whatever, bro. All the hot chicks are going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> that, that may be true. <laughs> you, 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 how pissed would we be, right? Oh, Son man. of a bitch. Nah. <laughs> this is some bullshit. Yeah. But I imagine if we're in heaven, we can visit hell. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I think right? if you're in hell, you're well, fucked. You're in hell. One. You, can, you can't like, come hey, up man, to heaven. But if we're in heaven, we can come down to hell. I want that one. That's what I think. I think that's what makes it so heavenly. I don't think so. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we could works. debate heaven and hell later. the waters. You know? we, we, we go there. So my mom does this, right? So we walk in and she literally like goes, here, talk to Lonnie. And she walks away. And I was like, oh, that was awkward as fuck. You know, like, literally like it was all of us kind of, it was me, Katrina, his name's Lonnie, my mom. And then she goes, she just like, just bolted and said, here, talk to Lonnie. And then walked away. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. So then, then there's that awkward, like we turn to each other, each other's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, it's like that. Uh, but it was cool. He was, uh, you know, he carried his own for sure. Uh, he's into uh, drag race and bikes, which I'm fucking love Harley. Okay. So I'm into that stuff. So he's a man's man. He does construction for a living. He's got a cool little house on the Delta out there. And uh, real cool dude. Seems like a good guy, man. Does he have I'm, kids? He does. He has a 31 year old and a 34 year old, and then he has he has one more. That's a I think I think 37 or 38. Cool. Yeah. So, but I you know I didn't get a chance to meet them. I don't know what kind of father he is, but for the most part, you know, he I thought he was cool. My mom. How was his hair? Huh? How was his hair? Oh yeah. Uh, a little bit like yours. Oh, okay. Yeah, he had a similar kind of dad look like you. Nice. Mm-hmm. Right. Like salt and peppery? Like, no, kind of like I don't care Disheveled really like the yeah. you know, like, handsome, like, tall, like good-looking guy, guy, but I'm not going to really try or put too yeah, any awesome, effort though. into yeah. it. Oh, you know? I like him. Yeah, I know. You kind of blows with the wind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care. Yeah, no, he looked yeah. good. He was he was sharp. He was sharp, good guy. Um I like I liked him, but that's all my mom is like so my mom married my my real father when I when I was when she was 15 or 16. Had wow. me had me by twenty, you know. Then my real dad dies when I'm seven. She remarries again within a year, so she's never really had this single life. So the last like ten years of her life that she has been single, she divorced my stepfather. Now, like I'm watching her go through like this dating process, it's like an awkward uh, it's, steps it's, going into it. It's very weird. Did for they me. meet online? Yeah. Or should do the they whole do? Online? They did. Wow. It, it, it was like a well, it wasn't Christian mingle. There's something called Zeus Farmers Only dot com. Yeah, it was, to- oh, yeah. It was totally Zeus. one of those. Yeah, it was Zeus. I didn't even know. It's like a where Zeus. big guys can meet the ladies. Maybe hey. maybe it's just for big dudes. I, that or like adult Zeus. tender. I don't know. I don't know what. It, I don't know what. It, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but. Uh, you know that you know. I just heard a stat actually on this that over. I think it was eighty four or eighty two percent of uh, relationships now start online. Yep, that is crazy. Yeah, that makes high. perfect sense. Majority, 80, majority of marriages now people over. Met online. Well, I mean, mm. here's what's neat, and this is why. I mean, I I remember in our generation, right, coming up in this, you used to tease somebody about that, but in reality now, yeah. I mean, it's probably really cool how quick you can totally like. Oh, not into that, not into that, not into that. Not, okay, she ain't going to work. Sure, she's hot, but we don't like any of the same things. So you just like, right. you wouldn't waste your time even really talking to that Dude, person. There's so you, a, I think you can hone in on like, so she has I, too many stuffed animals. So someone, was, run for the hills. someone was telling me that, because there's dating websites now for everything. Someone was telling me that there's a dating site for people with STDs. Whoa. Yeah, like if you have an STD, you could find people who have the same STD. <laughs> I want my crabs to match your crabs. So you guys can. So you guys can. Bear- this is awesome. Isn't that? Yeah. Isn't then it almost turns into like a competition, like how many you can yeah. get. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then you give it to be part of that group. It's like, oh, I got five. Herpes. We dog love dog. STDs. <laughs> do, 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 do. Which one do you want? Today? Which they, one do you have? They yeah. do. I mean, they literally have a. I'm, you, we were, you were joking about the farmers.com, but they've created like a you know a subcategory for everything and those things are so big they and have a site they actually have a website now where i think if you're a younger dude who likes to date older women even you imagine what would happen with that adam wow back in the day katrina's always worried about me leaving her for date your teacher dot lady. com yeah. yeah you have like a weird old lady fetish i'm really worried about you uh, <laughs> like, oh, it's, it's my mom issues so i'm like <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, oh, and I'm like, that, I said, I don't have an old lady thing. I was like, when I was 20, I liked 30 year olds. That's fucking totally different. Yeah. I don't, now now at, that you're old, they're yeah, a lot older. Yeah, well, yeah, at yeah. 35, I still like the 30 year olds. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. Yeah. It stayed the same, you know what I'm saying, yeah. as I got older. I just liked older, mature like, women. The part is you get discounts on like food. Right? You go to restaurants. Or you get parking in yeah. there, like the senior That's parking cool. and shit like that. AARP, you know, stamps, <laughs> all like, that hey, stuff. Say, like, baby, that sex was great. You want me to carry your walker out to the <laughs> Hey, Justin, how was your Easter? It was cool. We had just basic family stuff. Do you guys do the Easter egg hunt with your kids? We did it on, uh, yeah, on Sunday. We did it, and my brother brought his kids and stuff, so they just... Yeah, we just put them all over the place and, and had and watched them, videoed it, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was like so typical. You yeah, know? yeah. Do you like, like candy? No, no. That yeah. was the one thing that I I was actually proud of was like I, I influenced my mom to put like money in there and then like toys and stuff. So there was like very few like pieces of candy because, dude, like. It's, since they wake up, it's like this it's fucking diabetes. this crack, oh, you know, like sensation. That they'll eat like one piece of candy, and then the whole day is just. Dude, like, I, had, yeah! I had a lot of candy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I did, dude. Actually, uh, half of a chocolate bunny, and a bunch of uh, uh, like gummy. What are they called? Uh, peaches. Gummy mm. peach circles. Oh, I love uh, those. It looks like buttholes, yeah, yeah. but anyway, those. that's why you like them so much. Probably, <clears throat> but they're they're uh, tongue, tongue it in a circle fashion. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's how I eat it too. <laughs> I knew uh, it. You <laughs> sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mix it with the chocolate bunny. He's just like, ooh, you peach rim it's, jobs it's, for it's, everybody. It's fucking. Oh, I've been blah. watching way too much porn. You, you know what else I ate? You know what else I ate yesterday? That was I haven't had in that ordinary probably thirty years. Whoa. Uh Pillsbury Crescent Rolls. Oh, yeah. Oh, those, wow. are, those are amazing. What, you, but what is it? It's not even a, real. When I was I a kid, we what used, is that stuff? That was we used our to, dinner roll. We used to like, make donuts out of those. Dinner roll? We used to poke holes in the center of those and you deep fry it in vegetable oil and, and, and then make donuts. Well, no, I'm just like, saying. So, wow. so I had oh. them. And everybody was stomach hurt and everybody was referring to it as bread, like, ooh, who wants bread? And I'm like, bread. And I'm like, that's not bread. So I'm biting into it and I'm analyzing like the flavor. I'm like, this is engineered like this is yeah, scientifically sure. designed to taste really good but you can also taste that it's not real you know yeah. what i mean crescent Did, roll it's I weird ate, too i forgot all about that you popped the thing ate the shit out of those as a kid biscuits yeah. and gravy that was like a a, a a staple but you know what's on biscuit. the box that wasn't so i looked at the box and yeah, i've never box. actually i've never read that because i haven't since i've learned about eating correctly <laughs> it's yeah. gotten older that's just not something that well, even so, makes its way to my house so i want to ask you guys how you guys deal with this because when i'm over someone else's house and they're like making food or the Oh you know, getting God. things out of boxes. I tend to grab the box and look at the ingredients, but then I realize that I look like a dickhead when yeah. I'm doing that. Oh, I, I bet. don't do that. So I don't do it anymore. So instead, I try to look at it like when they're not looking at it. I try <laughs> to look at it to try and read. <laughs> I just asshole. know what. Yeah, like, you just know, what to bro. moderate. Well, dude. I know it's not good, but yeah. I wanted to see the actual ingredients because I was interested. Well, my problem is now that okay. like, people know that you know my family, what I do for a living, and everything. Like, so my un aunt and uncle were there too. No, this they came from Minnesota, and it's like. All they want to do is just grill me on nutrition facts yeah. and this and that. I'm just like, oh my god, can I just eat? No, this wasn't yeah. with this wasn't with my family. So you I, can't. So you, I, but I was looking at. You the can't front do of that, bro. You can't. I'm gonna give you some. We can't do that. Like it's already. People are already weird about being eating around. Oh, I you. know. You can't. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you at all giving attention to what. Oh, being, I didn't. So, I ate yeah, it. Yeah, I ate you it, gotta just like. And I, I'm looking at the box though, because check, just check on the it, counter. Check it off as like not a good day. And there's a, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, there's <laughs> like a, or a fasting day. There's like a little red. Yeah. There's like a little red label on it or something, and it says no trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup. So I'm like, what are they using instead? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. you know they're doing there. You know they figured some else, some some other shit out. Yeah. yeah, some yeah. Other it's compound. not like it's not like butter that's in there. I'm pretty sure it's something out like soybean yeah. oil or some shit. It's oh, it's shit. actually one of my biggest pet peeves that I have to talk about nutrition and exercise yes. when I'm at. Thank at, you. At, yes. I don't like it, and I you I don't know, mind talking about it. I just don't like it when people do the whole like. Oh well, sorry. We don't really have that much for you to eat, you know. Yeah. Like, like I'm like, does this meet your standards? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I I try and um, super condescending. I try yeah. and avoid those conversations as much as possible. But it doesn't matter. I feel like no matter what, because people know what you and I'll look them up. even if they eventually ask you like what you do for a living, and then you tell them, and they're like, and it's like instantly, instantly, everybody has this need to explain themselves, right? 
Like, I don't fucking care. Like, eat what you want to eat. Like, it's, I am the furthest from being judgmental on what you're going to do. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, well, the worst, the, the worst for me is like, so you asked me a question that, you know, I thought you're interested in, but really you're just asking this to like try and make me look like a dick. <laughs> at the at the same time, you're not even listening to my answer. Yeah. So no. fuck you for asking me. No, you it's, know? it's not. It's one of my, I, it's a oh, major bad piece. It irritates me. And it does, it does tend to happen. The more I'm in like situations where, and there, there was twice this Easter, right? So I went to another house that I went to my stepdad's house and he must've had 30 plus people there. Uh, and most of them I've never met before. And so the topic of what you do, and I always normally tell people like, oh, I, you know, talk on this radio podcast thing. And I just kind of, well, whatever. Katrina always, is always elbowing me. Stop downplaying what you do. And I'm like, it's like, I don't, it's because I don't want to talk. I always do that too. Yeah. Oh, I just, yeah, I don't oh, want to. I just do stuff. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. She pretty much supports me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to start telling people shit like that. I don't want to talk about it. I really don't. Which is unfortunate because I love what we do. You know, yeah. I really, well, I had to explain to a 70s something year old or maybe 80 year old man <laughs> what a podcast was. It was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you should. Like, so what do you that. do? Great guy, oh, by the way. Amazing. By the way, great guy. He's uh, he's from that generation. In case that he's listening, that's what that it he's, was. He comes yeah. from that generation that doesn't give a shit. Yeah. So he was super inappropriate with like half of his jokes. That's great. And he's I was my just, favorite. Yeah, I was just fucking dying of laughter. But anyway, I'm trying to explain to him what a, what a podcast was. So I said, I have a, it's a fitness podcast. And he's like, what's a podcast? I'm like, it's like a radio show. And he's like, how the fuck does that work? That's exactly what he said to me. <laughs> he goes, so let me, he goes, what do you, so how do you tell people to work out on a podcast? And so I, I took me like 10 minutes while I'm explaining to him to realize that what he thought I meant was that you tune into the podcast and, and we tell you, you to work workout. out. Yeah. 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 All right. Like five it's more real push time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can see the look. Harder. On, yeah. 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 You can see the look on his face. He was You're like, not even sweating yet. He was like, what a shit idea. Like, what a terrible. <laughs> like, the look on his face, he couldn't figure it out. He's like, what the fuck is wrong with people? Like, wouldn't it be better to be on TV? And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, they can't so see you. This I'm like, is no. Weird. I'm like, it's like a talk show. And he's like, yeah. oh, okay. Do you do the Easter Bunny thing in the morning? Oh, like. Uh, we, we, we scatter like eggs and stuff, but I mean, we sort of associate it with the, the Easter bunny, but it's not like high production, you know, like, yeah. Oh, there's an Easter <laughs> high production, you know, there's an Easter bunny Easter. footprint over here. And uh, <laughs> like, I don't even know, like who does that shit? So, you know, the previous ep the episode we had like two episodes ago, where we were like, kind of like questioning, like, why do we lie, our lie to our kids about these characters and shit? Oh, yeah. really they know I sense. did it and yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so my kids were with my ex, so I wasn't there for the Easter Bunny thing, but I went there shortly afterwards so I can, you know, hang out with them and stuff. And I, my daughter, she's, you know, she's seven, so she believes in all this stuff. My son, he knows. And uh, I'm like, so uh, Easter Bunny bringing you a present? She's like, yeah, she's so excited and she's showing me and we're, you know, we're playing and stuff. And I said, how does the Easter Bunny get in the house? Does he use the <laughs> chimney like Santa Claus? <laughs> and she goes, no. She goes, he comes in through the, through the sliding glass door. I'm like, that's weird. I'm like, it was locked. <laughs> she's like yeah you, what, you're such you're, a yeah, dick what are you doing she goes yeah he comes in and I'm like he doesn't set off the alarm or anything she uh. goes no he has magic mm. so I'm like oh so he uses magic to do all these things she's like yeah and I'm like trying to plant the seeds like let's get you to question shit magic, magic. <laughs> you're such, you know, such a bad man. dad bro yeah. look at oh, you dude. that's so awful I'm gonna start like planting <laughs> the seeds <laughs> of dissent you know what I mean wow. like really do you yeah. really think that's yeah. possible honey yeah. <laughs> you're well, such a that's crazy that he has that magic, but he can't just See, give I you tried more that. toys. Why don't you just ask for more toys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tried that, and then my son came up, and he's like, hey, Dad, where'd you get these baskets? And I was like, oh, no, the Easter Bunny got them for you. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dad, it was like CVS, right? And I'm just like, ah. So it was funny. Yes. It's funny you guys are going this direction, because while I was at my stepdad's house, these people that I was just meeting, so we're all talking, We and this conversation came up, because I shared on the podcast, we talked about Elf on the Shelf, and when to tell your kids this, and one of the girls there goes, oh, my daughter just found out about the Easter Bunny today, like, and she's been crying all day long. See? Oh, no. So she was just like, so, and the way yeah, she, like, the way she, the way she found out was that her mom left, accidentally left a receipt or re left a, uh, a tag on the, on like the chocolate bunny or whatever, <laughs> to, to like, you know, Walmart, okay, so Walmart no. or whatever okay, she bought it from. ruined everything. So, so <laughs> now imagine, receipt. imagine that situation, right? Because her daughter's probably a little too young to kind of figure it out so that's why she's crying right because once they figure it out there's not that big of a deal but yeah now imagine as a parent like your, your child's like oh, there's a label what does it mean like uh freeze frame 
you have two options here. Double down on my lie and make up some more shit. <laughs> uh-huh. Or tell you know what I mean? So you could be like, oh, it looks like the well, Easter bunny uh, trying to trick you to think or he's not this in existence. It looks like the Easter bunny shops at Walmart too, yeah. like mommy and daddy. Yeah. That's crazy. I'll keep my eye open next time. Yeah. You know, you know how it, I figured it out. Easter Bunny's getting thrifty. Every time, every, <laughs> yeah, every, when know? I was a, when I was a kid, when I, I, I would ask, for, I would ask for shopper. shit. My mom would be like, "That's too expensive for Santa Claus." I'd be like, "Expensive? Yeah, he's got elves. <laughs> he's gonna make me whatever the fuck I want." Yeah, they're doing <laughs> slave labor. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute, yeah, I know. it's not it's real. Like Sweatshop. Yeah, Santa Claus is running a sweatshop. Yeah, but anyway, I feel like shit today after that sugar. I can tell, totally tell. Oh, I imagine. I can totally tell. I, the day we did the drunk Q&A, I was just a fucking yeah, you did. mess after that. Nailed oh, you. God, dude. I just felt awful. I went home and slept like a baby. God, that was hilarious, though, huh? Well, when we, we did, did the little trivia. That was a good, a good time, though. It was, it was d- the Justin. So we're going to do those? Like- Justin spit all oh, over dude. me. And when you watch the video, you can see like the chunks of it. It was like out. a half laugh, and I was trying to say it at the same time. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but man, some like three huge chunks oh. just flew. That's the first time you spit on that is going to have to be something we don't do not often swallow, because I'm that's sorry. like too much too much recovery trying to get in it i, uh, I mean yeah. i think taylor was talking about possibly doing that like once a month maybe and we'll see but that was that's too much yeah it was you gotta give it you you put, give the you people pussies. what they want though <laughs> right. let's do it with like whiskey i can you know manage that better see i don't like this justin's wheelhouse if we do anything drunk he's he's in charge yeah yeah he does want to get you guys all weird what yeah. did you do for easter what did you end up doing we went to, so first we stopped at my family's house for a little bit, um, and then we went to Jessica's, got some family friends, so we went to their house and just hung out the whole time. And then afterwards we went home and watched a documentary. What'd you guys watch? Uh, oh, you know what I watched? <laughs> Ooh. Um, shit, what's it called? Fuck. Uh, what was unco- it about? The Mysteries of the Unseen, or Uncovering the Mysteries of the Unseen. It was like a 30-minute or 40-minute documentary on Netflix. Mm. Really fucking cool. Yeah. Like, they're showing all the stuff that you can't consciously perceive, like- x-rays and gamma rays and like the very very small and the very very mm. slow like we don't see like trees growing because they grow so slow but they're yeah. doing all this time lapse photo and really cool stuff like i learned that when a wa- when a water drop drops in a pool of water it bounces off and creates smaller and smaller drops until it completely disappears and it does this every single time Oh shit! Mm. Do they have like a super slow mo camera? Yeah, they oh, show. Was, so it doesn't actually remember, penetrate the water. No, it's because the of the surface tension. Because so, yeah. of the surface tension, so it like right. bounces and then it bounces. That makes sense. Was that the first time you've seen a video like that done super slow mo on something? I've seen it, but I didn't know that like piece of it. You know. So you know what's cool is, uh, and they got introduced probably ten years ago, maybe fifteen now. It's been a while, but I remember the when that camera that camera first came out oh, that had the super. the super super slow mo, and then the baseball bat when they show. A baseball. Oh, and it gets smashed. Oh, it's Isn't so weird. It's so wild to watch the, that connection and what actually yeah. happens. You know, it's so it's like the ball actually bounces. Oh off. yeah, and you see the bat like completely bend, like it's rubbery. Yeah, you know? everything it, bends. Yeah, like it's to an extreme. It, it's pretty wild to watch that. No, very very fascinating. I didn't know that happens with a raindrop though. Yeah, they had that, and they that they alone saw. makes me want to watch it. I want to see what that looks like. Yeah, mm. and then I saw uh, how many times does it bounce? Like hundreds of times, or just like one? Time I don't then, really. I don't know how many times, but just it just keeps doing it, and yeah. it just keeps turning into smaller and smaller, like drop. It's pretty weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty weird. That's it. It's pretty uh, fascinating. Nerdy. I think we should bring the bird. Bring your on. Bring it, man. <laughs> being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. First is Adam J. Castro. How do antidepressants affect fitness? You know, I've actually had people ask me this question uh, several times in the last few months um, on my uh, on my own personal Instagram page. Antidepressants are an interesting class of drugs. Uh, you know what's interest most interesting about this is how many people are on them now. The uh, there's a what was the stat? It's like crazy. What, uh, One in three or I, something like that. There's a large percentage of people that are prescribed antidepressants, or maybe that was just pills. I don't remember. What's it was high though. It was very high. And what's what's really interesting about so the most commonly prescribed antidepressants are SSRI classes of drugs like Zoloft or um, Prozac. SSRI uh, stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor, and so what these drugs do is they 
reduce the amount of serotonin that's reuptaked uh, in the brain. So it increases the amount of serotonin that's floating around the brain. So it gives you more, I guess, more available serotonin. And the effects uh, take a while to, to, to really come up. So I guess you're supposed to be on them for anywhere between 4 to 12 weeks before you feel them working. Now, the studies on SSRIs are pretty interesting. They're just a little bit better than placebo for most cases. So it's kind of interesting to look at. And in fact, when you look at, uh, I, would, I would venture to say, and I'm not a doctor, so I want to I preface this by saying that so nobody uh, sues me for you know, trying to take this advice. But if, you, com- if we, you look at studies that compare exercise and nutrition to antidepressants, exercise and nutrition outperform them. Um, and, and in the long term, they continue to outperform them uh, better and better and better. Um, of course, exercise and nutrition are not as easy as you know, taking a pill. And I think that's why people tend to want to take an antidepressant. Uh, and for some people, apparently, they do help quite a bit. But here's my opinion on how they affect fitness. Because they've actually done studies on antidepressants. And they're, uh, they're hard to really look at because the kind of people who take antidepressants are probably depressed. And if it helps you from a depressed state to a non-depressed state... Yeah, you can't, you can't beat that yeah, argument. Do, do that's you, the argument they've had for years. Yeah, dude. do you think you're going to have improved fitness? Probably. Right, if you're if you're really down and depressed, and an antidepressant improves your mood, you're probably going to have better fitness. But on the flip side of that, one of the number one side effects of antidepressants is weight gain, mm-hmm. um, and there's some theories behind that. One of the theories is that people may actually be eating more, or at least craving uh, foods that uh, tend to uh, taste better because now that now that someone you know once someone's depressed and once they come out of it, they start to enjoy things again. And so maybe they're eating more as a result of, of, of it. But there's also some theories hmm. that it actually does something to the metabolic uh, system, and, and it actually causes weight gain that way. And there's actually some pretty compelling evidence. Well, do you know? Do you know? That do you know what is actually happening with like dopamine and serotonin? What's going on with that? Do you know what exactly uh, happens when you take in one of those? It, it just increases serotonin. Is what it's supposed to do. Now, does that influence uh, the other aspects of the brain? I would believe so. I don't know. Yeah. But um, I would absolutely believe so. Uh, and there's like, be, and you look at some of the side effects of antidepressants. For example, erectile dysfunction is a big one. Um, that tends to be a problem uh, with some men who take antidepressants, probably because I think serotonin um, can cause issues, uh, sexual issues, can reduce uh, like the ability to get re- achieve orgasm. Um, is one of them also weight gain? Like I said before, that's ironic. The chemical that makes you feel good in your brain also make, hinders you fucking getting a boner. Uh, well, doesn't it just make said. you feel more? Why does that more seem backwards? Right? This shit like, sounds backwards to yeah. me. Well, I mean, if you look at like illegal drugs, like, like aloof. look at illegal drugs like MDMA, for example. MDMA is not an SSRI, but it does cause your brain to produce a shit ton of serotonin. And you feel amazing. But one of the side effects of, of, of MDMA, which is, is awesome dancer, is that you can't. That people, a lot of guys say they can't have sex mm. or they can't mm. orgasm on it. Um, and so I think lots of serotonin, more serotonin has, uh, tends to cause that. And I know dopamine's involved in that process. And I think you may be right, Adam. There may be something going on with dopamine there. Mm. Um, but there are other antidepressant drugs, the SNRI drugs, which are the selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Now, those may increase or improve athletic performance because norepinephrine is uh, it's one of those chemicals that's kind of that, that energy chemical. Mm-hmm. And so if it increases the amount of norepinephrine in your system, you might actually have more of that wired energy. Um, but I look, I mean, I did, I've done research on this and the studies, I mean, they don't point to any athletic benefit whatsoever. But I think, again, if you're depressed and you become not depressed, you're probably going to have better performance. The, the, the awesome thing would be to get that person and not not let them know that you're going to give them sugar pills, keep them working out, eating right, right? So they, they, they're they taking the pills thinking that they're getting it. So the placebo effect is is about like 80% as successful, mm. some crazy high number. I remember I remember reading that. It's yeah, and the it, difference between the placebo, the sugar pills, uh, and the, the actual- power of belief. Yeah, it was it is is like, strong. especially with something like that, right? With something that is a, a, a mental disorder, right? That's going on. So well, I think that- Well, consider this, like, let's, let's, look, let's look a little deeper. Uh, so SSRIs attempt to give the brain more serotonin because they think that depression may be a- uh, you have issues with producing serotonin or you have issues with using serotonin. So more serotonin is supposed to help you. Okay, that's the theory behind SSRIs. Most of the serotonin that's produced in your body is produced in your gut. And there is a very strong connection with depression and gut issues. 
In fact, people who are depressed tend to have stomach problems. Well, this is what we kind of talked with Rob Wolf a little bit. Mm -hmm. I remember you brought that up as a question to him, and he's like, no, absolutely, it's connected for sure. Yeah, so I would say I've had clients in the past who um, have you know come and see me and hired me and have had issues with depression, and the way that I've seen them use uh, uh, you know, antidepressants is they'll take the antidepressants to give them the energy to do something because sometimes you're so down that, uh, and again, this is clinical depression. And again, mm-hmm. I'm not a doctor, but if you're, sometimes these people are so down that they're not even, they just can't get up off the, they can't do anything. Yeah. And so sometimes these drugs help them just get up and start doing something. And then once they start moving and doing all the things that they know are going to make them feel better physically, then they start to reduce their, you know, their antidepressant use. But again, you want to do that under the supervision of a doctor because I do know that going off antidepressants, cold turkey, has got some pretty, can have some pretty scary side effects as well. But, you know, consider your gut health um, uh, as, a, as a big factor in the physical, uh, you know, causes of uh, depression or anxiety. Work on gut health and then exercise and fitness, and, uh, you know, make a huge impact as well. So um, I know we're going a little off topic, but those, but you know, all those things well, it's connected can no, have it's yeah can have a pretty all. pretty great impact on you know mild to moderate depression. I think at the end of the day, your your goal though would be to try and get your client or whoever it is to wing them off of that, right? You wouldn't want you. I mean, I don't think anybody who's taking a, a prescription wants to take it all. I think ideally for anybody, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to just stop taking it and then be in and feel you know yep. incredible. Right. So. Austin 4100, what are Sal, Adam, and Justin's specific fitness goals? Oh, like our personal? Like currently. Personal? Yeah, current goals. Is, is that what it is? Is current? Yeah, like what's your current personal fitness goal? I don't know. Why don't hmm. you go first, Adam? I always go first. Actually, I always go first on questions like this, and then all the other ones you tend to hop in and jump in. Maybe. First. Did you ever notice that? We do. You have do we do that? Pa- <laughs> you do have kind of pattern. Interesting. It yeah. works. Because uh, you like me to tell a story first so you can put yours together. That's why I've already put that together. Uh, what am I currently working on right now? My imbalances, uh, for me, that's been a major one. It's been a major focus for the last almost year now. What are your imbalances? Are the same? Yeah, no, I've, so I have, and that's, okay, that's great. Great question. Great point. And this is, now this will lead into probably a better topic here. So I think a lot of times when you get your first like level of awareness of, oh shit, like I've got like this, you know, ankle pronating or I've got this you know, my hip abducting, or I've got something going on right with my body that's causing either pain or, you know, discomfort somehow, and you start to address it. I think there's a major misconception on how that, how that works. Like it's probably more than likely for most people going to be something that you will forever be addressing going forward. Cause most of us are 30 plus years old. And if you had these imbalances for a long time, that's a long time that you've had these bad patterns and to think that you're just going to, oh, go see this chiropractor or go do a couple of movements or go follow Prime for two months and say, oh, I'm fixed. Like, no, like it's a constant, you know, battle of trying to get these better movement patterns. And for me, you know, I've got this major issue where when I sit down in the, the baby position, I've got my left foot that tends to want to pronate. And then I've also got, you know, poor thoracic mobility in that deep of a squat. Now I say poor and and, and that because that's been, it's been really poor. I've come a long way where I'm at now, but that's a lot of what I'm doing right now. I I have my, my, my primer. I'm spending probably more time in maps prime and fortification sessions than anything else. I'm still lifting. And I just recently kind of transitioned into a little bit back into my maps Mm -hmm. black, and going that direction, but I still wouldn't even consider myself following Maps Black. I'm more Maps Prime and Fortification with sprinkles of my 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 Maps Black in there every now and then. So because I you know I know summer's around the corner, and you know I am aesthetic driven. I know I'm going to be at pools. I'm going to be on the boat. We'll be in Vegas, things like that. And so I do want to get back towards my aesthetics a little bit, but I don't feel like I'm that far off because I've, I've still been training. I've just been focused more on my mobility. Mm. And, you know, I, the big thing for me is just tightening up my diet. I've, I've, I've kind of like, I haven't tracked in a very, very long time because I haven't been focused on weight gain or loss or building muscle. It's been how I move. So my main focus is how I'm moving. And, and for me, I have to like, like I haven't weighed myself in literally like months. So in order for this to work, I have to completely like, 
I don't do good with like dabbling back and forth in, in, on, on goals, if that makes sense. Because what happens, especially when I'm focusing on a goal that is opposite of what it, like my insecurities are. So if I have a really hard time with my whole life with being the skinny guy, wanting to build muscle, and then I decide I'm going to focus on a goal that has that is really not attached to that whatsoever, which would be moving better, right? That performance, that's all that matters. And if I'm going to be true to that, then I really have to like not care about the other one. Is it because you feel like then your you, that the insecurity starts to peak out? And, yes. and it drives you to oh no, I got to go lift heavier. Yes. I got to go eat more. Yes. Yeah. You know because if I start like doing the you know mirror selfies, weighing myself, checking all that it fucks with you. Yeah. Then it go. Then I'm like. Fuck! I fuck this mobility. I want to go. I want to get back to shape. You know, I want to look a certain. Do way. Do you think there'll ever be a point where that that won't happen? Where you're you're going to be okay with that? And it's you're like, okay, I don't have to fear that it's going to drive. me. I think I'm way. really close to that. You know, I think I'm really close to that. And there's parts of me that goes back and forth. If I because and we kind of talked about this before with like we we got into the whole like dressing right, uh, how we how we how you uh, dress and and how that you go through these changes in your yeah. life of like caring about it and not caring about right. it. I don't want to get to a point too where I don't give a fuck either because I think yeah. sometimes you can also identify with that with being so comfortable with oh I don't care how I look sure. that that you like it then real easily you make a lot of bad choices because well of that, that may be where you're at now because you're you're um, not looking at all yeah you know what I mean yeah like you're just not looking at all versus uh, you know it's, I mean. I guess ultimately that would be the place to be, right? Is where you can do all that and not and it, not worry about it influencing your decisions in yeah. terms of. That's a tough place to. to it is, to. and I think I'm I'm you know for me a lot. I struggle of, with that still. A lot of I think you ha I think everybody does, and I think to say you don't, you're a fucking liar. You know, I think that that's. I think there probably there might be some people who do. I I could see us, bro. I, I could see you and I being there. You know, when we're 50, 60, I, I can't see us being so, st I mean, or who knows? I might go the opposite direction, right? Yeah, exactly. I think the older I, I the, the older I get, the more uh, proud I am that I've taken care of my physique. And so, and I'm more motivated too as I get older. Like, that's one of the things that actually motivates me, especially when I run into like old friends that I haven't seen in a long time that, you know, man, they, they're some of my buddies like, fuck, they look, they look worn down, dude. Yeah, they look they look old, you know what I'm saying? And they've already like kind of checked it off on like they're not doing much physical activities anymore. And it's like it's like card tape poker tables, fishing and like, you know, things that don't require a lot of movement. And I'm not ready to fucking check it in, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that motivates me to stay focused on that. So I don't know how I don't know when we talked yet, we just had a great podcast with Brett McKay, right? About mindset. And I don't think I ever want to get too comfortable. I think I like to be uh, uncomfortable and like and challenging that. I think I think just being aware of it is the key, right? Like mm. not being a major driver. See that, that, and I and see I go back and forth with that because I, when you say too comfortable, I th I think I thought that for a second too. But then I, I asked myself, I said, well, what do, what am I perceiving as too comfortable? Too comfortable. I, I think maybe you're perceiving it as not caring, which I don't think that's the same thing. I think comfort is just being comfortable in your own skin. And well, taking that, care of so yourself to, from that standpoint. So that's comfortable. So that's comfortable. That's comfortable. You, oh, Too comfortable. Oh, is the not caring. Is the not is going to the extreme. And that's and I think there's a fine line between the two of them. Mm. And I think a lot of people use that to justify where they're at. I think a lot of people say they're comfortable. Exactly. And they're not. Exactly. It's like the whole like you know, I like I know That's too comfortable to I, me. I have a friend that's like really obese and you, wonderful woman, love her to death, but she's constantly like, I'm so like, all she does is post about how beautiful she Celebrate, is and how much I yeah. love my, you know, I, you know, but, but it's not, it's, it's, you can tell she's, it's her projecting. She's closing herself as much as she she's trying to close can. herself. Yeah. You can, to me, I can see right through that when someone yeah. is like that. So that's the definition of too comfortable to me. So there's comfortable. Yes. Too comfortable okay. is when you start to use it to shield your insecurities. It's like so. I do. I I want to. I don't know how comfortable it is though. To be honest with you, she's probably not. You know what I mean? She's probably, from our standpoint, looks that way. But I'm sure she's hurting. Yeah, oh, you know in sign, mean? right? It's yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the too comfortable, I think, is referring to the, the where the place, person is at, not necessarily the feeling that they yeah, have, right? Yeah. So, I think that that people it, can get themselves in this too comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, like so, like my buddies say, like, and they they joke light, lightly about it, it's like. Bro, I, like I'm, I'm getting older. Let it happen. It's natural. It's normal. You know, like, and yeah. they, they really try and say it and roll off like that. I'm like, well, no. Like to me, the movement. I think you know, yeah. someone like Jack Lane had it. It's so crazy right. how, how far ahead of the, his time he was. 
you know, a lot of people don't know this, but the way he started every single fucking morning of his life, do you know that he went and like articulated every, every fo- finger, every ri- like he every like digit. And, yes, you know, he just like would make sure everything from his, ma- his, yeah. mouth, his, his mouth, his mouth, his mouth, his jaw, neck, his neck, moves, his toe, yeah. each one of his toes, each one of his fingers, and he just yeah, stayed so far ahead. Of oh my right, crazy, and yeah. that explains so much of what the physical feats he was doing at like eighty yeah. years old. Because he stayed connected his entire life to his own body. And so many people are so quick to fucking disconnect. He's also yeah. someone that I think was a, just a great example of actually being that, you know, in that health and longevity kind of mindset. Uh, you know, he did do those physical, you know, uh, feats of of performance, but... He, he he wasn't. It didn't seem like he was driven by. No. You know, it was an event by event. It was a whole lifestyle. Like every day, he yeah. would, you know, sort of teach people like this is what I do consistently because I I'm benefiting my body yeah. that way. You know, there was a lady that uh, worked out at one of the gyms that um, I used to manage, and she was. I'm trying to remember now. It was a long time ago. She's probably in her mid 40s, and she was this very um, kind of earthy, beautiful just she looked very healthy woman and she would come in and she would lift weights sometimes and sometimes she would do cardio and sometimes she would do yoga sometimes she would swim but she she was so comfortable in her own skin that I didn't I could I I, I she stuck in my mind because she was so comfortable with it like she was just this beautiful woman she had gray hair so she didn't dye her hair so she was just totally comfortable with you know how she was and who she was and pe- everybody in the gym would comment on her like man you know she's she, god she looks so good and i'll never forget her because she just exemplified that that level of like you know just being who you are but yeah. you know taking care of herself because she loves herself type of thing um and it it looks i mean it looks amazing and it feels amazing to be around and that was once i saw that i admired it uh i didn't realize that that's that would be my goal but it is now now yeah. Now my ultimate goal well, is that, to be in that state. Yeah, that type of person has really been able to establish what their own personal like routines, what their own uh, way of benefiting their own body instead of like um, doing something so other people give you compliments or mm-hmm. other people uh, are are looking at you with judgment or uh, or you're just you're not judging yourself enough. You yeah, know, as mm-hmm. far as like uh, you know what could I. What could I be doing to to improve? And and some people really do. They they hone in on that. Like this is what makes me operate better. This is how it benefits my body. And like it's so obvious when you meet well, somebody like that. So this morning I was working out over at Club Sport, and you know they have the pool over there. And I'm going there in the morning. I go pretty early, so I'm there by like six six a.m. or whatever, six thirty. And uh, there was this uh, there in the pool area. There's always old like older generation people in there working out and. There's a large, uh, large percentage of these uh, of these are, are older, stage. older, older Asian women, and they're doing their movements and exercises in the pool. And I was talking uh, with uh, you know Jessica about this, uh, how in Eastern culture movement is such a part of their culture. It's been a part of their culture for for a long time. Oh yeah, you know if you go to China, they'll have parks and you'll see. Mm-hmm. You know, people in their seventies, eighties, nineties, tai chi, and they're doing cool tai shit. chi and yeah. exercise, and it's it's a part of their culture. It's very different than the way it's a part of our culture. And our culture, fitness is not a uh, part of wellness. It's about a it's either performance or it's looking good. Well, well we've real- gone to the opposite extreme where we glorify the 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 work martyrs, right? So the people that overwork uh, to be successful. That's the new standard of of person, you know, that we, we glorify, we glorify that whole process of, of, uh, you know, being a startup, but it, being, you know, but these, you know, to watch these destroying your body, watch these women doing, cause I was watching them for about five minutes and I was just so amazed because you, they were socializing with each other. They were moving and exercising and it was just mostly movement in the pool. And it was just great to see. And it is, it's a part of that Eastern so, culture and philosophy, which is, when you look at Eastern medicine, Eastern medicine reflects it. When you go to an Eastern medicine doctor with, uh, you tell them you have headaches or you have, you know, uh, acid reflux or, you know, constipation, whatever, some chronic, you know, disorder, they're going to look, they're going to ask, they're going to talk to you about your eating. They're going to talk to you about movement. They're going to talk to you about meditation. They're going to talk to you about your mood, all these different things. And it's just, a, it's been a part of their culture for so long, which is probably why they outlive us. I mean, I think 
if I'm not mistaken, the longest living like modern society right now uh, in the world is, I believe, South Korea. I believe the South Korean women there have like a average lifespan that's you're getting close to 90 now, which is destroys uh, America's lifespan. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's just that would just be an, that'd be an interesting stat to see. Actually, is to see what like what what a like what's the average uh, lifespan? Yeah, lifespan. Longest it, living it, people. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever. It, yeah. In the in all Maybe the different we'll countries. Yeah, I'm curious to see yeah. what the but, difference in that is. You know, it, for for me personally, for my current fitness goal, very specific. Now, this is just happening right now, and I'm going to do this for about 14 days. Is I and I and I reminded myself of this uh, over the weekend. One of the reasons why I love um, coaching people. I have very few clients that I work with, and mainly it's just keep my finger on the pulse of what we do. But the reason why I love to do it is because it reminds me that exercise and nutrition isn't just about you know uh, getting fit. Wow, Mon Monaco. Mainly. Where's Where's Monaco? Monaco. Yeah, uh, that's in the uh, Mediterranean. Holy shit, Monaco. Average eighty nine point five, so ninety years old. Yeah. Average Japan eighty four. Uh, Singapore, eighty-five. Yeah, there you go. Uh, San Marino. That's again in the in the in that whole eighty-three. Iceland, eighty-two. Hong Kong, eighty-two. Mm -hmm. Switzerland, eighty-two. So, Jesus, you're not gonna find. Oh, Canada. Canada beats us. They eighty-one do. for Canada. France, eighty-one. Norway. You know what makes Spain, me? You Australia. know what makes me angry about this? Where are is we? that? Wow. They'll they'll say that they'll attribute that to um, uh, healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's not fucking healthcare. It's, it's their lifestyle. Yeah. United 100%. States, 79. Yeah, we have a horrible lifespan. We're number 43. Yeah, we're one of the worst. So uh, for me, uh, I, I, wow. I, I remembered, I reminded myself that nutrition and exercise are also about having fun. And it's okay to have fun with them. And mm -hmm. so right now what I'm doing, and I do this every once in a while, is I dramatically increase my dietary cholesterol intake for about 14 days. And every time I do this, I notice a boost in strength and signs and symptoms of more testosterone. And of course, cholesterol is the building block for all these hormones. So right now I'm consuming lots of chicken livers and egg yolks, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. Um, wow, Afghanistan. So just having fun with that. What about you, Justin? 50, bro, in Afghanistan. Well, yeah. That's the worst. Adam, they've, been, Adam they've, been war, they've been in war I do. Forever. It's just something that's <laughs> fascinating to me. That, yeah, yeah. yeah, for me, I, I think um, I I kind of pick and choose what what area or what adaptation I've been avoiding, and then I I weave that back into my, into my system. So for me, it's been conditioning, and uh, that's been a focus of mine. Like stamina? Yeah, like stamina, durability, you know, uh, just – just being able to um, move, move and accelerate, uh, and also be a little bit more powerful. And uh, those are traits I want to maintain. Like I don't want to just be strong or, or just um, I don't know. I, I tend to feel like my movement suffers quite a bit if I don't like maintain a certain level of power. And so I'll, I'll incorporate that um, and and do it in a way where. Um, it, the movement is, is a high priority for me. And, uh, I, I've been incorporating a lot more like kind of sled sprints and jump rope and, um, uh, like may spell swings. And so I, I, I tend to lean a little bit more on the unconventional stuff too. So I, I'm fun outdoor. Doing that. Yeah. I have a lot more fun. Do you know, I like to get outdoors. I've been, I've been running a lot more Hills, uh, lately around my house. I always love to do that because it, it gets me out in nature, and then um, it's just I, I get I get the endorphin rush too after I'm, I'm done, and so I feel really good. So, but then it, it is just at a certain point, then my body starts to kind of <laughs> feel feel the pressure of that. So I I need to weave back into uh, strength or mobility and focus a little bit more on that. You know, I think it would be kind of neat to actually set some sort of a goal like that we all decide on, and then actually kind of follow, and maybe we can kind of insta story it or talk about it we haven't done something like that. i mean remember we did we did my show first right where you followed my journey to get ready for the san jose pro mm -hmm. then we did justin's transfer did we do justin's transformation first which one was first i was first was justin right? was first justin was first oh justin was first so we did justin first justin we did justin's transformation first which was really cool and, and that was like fuck we first when we first started so that was way uh, back. i'm wondering how many people even remember that yeah you know? like, i doubt right yeah. like i mean i still we have so many new people now that uh or i've had inbox me like oh you competed like oh wow like so you just now came yeah, a lot board. of those things that's like, way it was like a hundred episode 100 something when we followed my san jose pro show uh-huh 
So maybe we come up with some something. I think that'd be kind of fun to do. Uh, do something, put it out there. Well, then, I'd like. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just putting it out there. I'd like to get some rings in here, and I'd love to do just yes. a whole series of body weight. Yeah. Just all we do is body oh, weight. Oh, somebody movement. asked oh, about going that. down there, that made me miss it big time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We YouTube, there, we just had somebody who uh, asked that, so that would yeah. be a cool thing to do. Man, you know, talking about cardio, fucking A, bro. I climbed Mission Peak this weekend. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> yeah. Motherfucker, bro. Did they kill you? I did it. I, yeah. Well, I didn't. So lately, first of all, let me preface this with I hate to hike. Like I, in fact, you Katrina, don't like hiking. I don't. Wow. I don't like I love hiking. hiking. I love yeah, hiking. I'm not a nature guy. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes us all different. <laughs> it's fucking neat that you guys love to be out there all the time. Like you know, it's funny. I grew up in the nature. I grew up in the fucking. Why don't you like hiking? I grew up in a place that you had to go 45 minutes You're to go like, to the grocery store. Yeah, I'm over, yeah. bro. I've uh, had the bears. I've had the, the wolves. Amenities. I've had the deer in my fucking yard. <laughs> I've done all that shit. Been in Yosemite a hundred times. Camped like, like everywhere. Like it wasn't nice just to be up there with your girl. I Lo- I do love some of the stuff, but here I, here's why the hiking, we're going on a whole other tangent talking about That's camping, right. but the hike was um, way intense. Like we, I like to like. Why right, is it so intense? I've never done Mission P. Is it it's like steep? steep grade the whole way. And normally when you do climbs like that, it's like a steep grade then they kind of level out it's for a while. steep. The whole time. And I heard that like, so that was my first time out there. So I heard that the roads on up there are really bad because of the winter we just had. So like it's all ruts and rocks and like pebbles. So you actually have to look where you're stepping because every step I'm stepping on a a rock this way, then that way, and then a crevice. And so, you know, I'm I'm paying attention to my footing the whole way up. So I, and there's a beautiful view. I mean, it's a gorgeous view of Fremont, San Jose. You're on top of the mountain. It's beautiful. Problem is you're so focused on the where you're stepping that you can't like walk down or like I would enjoy walking and talking with my girl, but like I was catching my breath the whole time. Is that the one that's got the what yes. is it like a pole or yes, whatever? Yes, that everybody takes pictures on. Yeah. Wasn't our sticker on the top of it? I didn't even look. Someone you, put our sticker on dude, the top. Dude, it was a few fans go up there, yeah. Oh, uh, and it's cra- there's a line to take the picture on there. <laughs> and I was I look at Katrina, I'm like, fuck that. We're not waiting a half hour just to take a picture on this thing. Like I, if people don't believe I was up here, I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't believe, <laughs> if you don't believe I came up here. Cause, and it, originally, just like selfie stick mania. Just I wondered sh- why people were so excited they climbed a hill until I, I was like, okay, that's something to be proud of because that shit fucking kicked my ass. Like that, the average person going up that, I was watching like some really deconditioned people. I was like, man, good for you. This is a this I can feel this. You know what I'm saying? And I and now mind you, I'm not cardio guy, so of course I'm supposed to be out of breath a little bit, but I saw some really deconditioned people that were trucking there up the hill. It was very motivating to see that many people out there i mean you're hundreds hundreds of people hiking at the same time wow. at the same hill mm. so it was uh my first time going up there uh i absolutely hated it wouldn't recommend it to anybody um <laughs> no it was cool i mean it's cool if you really like to hike but i i, I would have rather gone somewhere where that was a little more level where i could talk to my girl we could look at the scenery you like to walk yeah I like to walk okay yeah i'm a walker yeah. i'm a walker <laughs> <laughs> Our next question is from the slimy unicorn. Ooh, where's she been? I love, what? A she? Is it a she? Do we know that? Slimy huh? unicorn. Probably. Tell us. Mm. All right. So the slimy unicorn is asking, what do you it's do when you goo. slip off of your pre-competition diet? This person tends to go to extremes after slipping. So I got an, I got a little analogy for you. Uh, well, first off, what, this, what the slimy unicorn is talking about uh, is when they are in pre-comp mode, so they got this real strict diet. Then they go off of it because they fuck up, they binge or whatever, have a cheap have a cheat meal. And then the next day, they'll do like tons of cardio or they won't eat all day to try and make up for it. So th- the analogy that I like to use with this is like when you're driving on a wet road and your car starts to slip into one direction, if you overcorrect with your steering wheel, you're going to spin and crash. And that's the equivalent of what's happening when you oh, Highway 17. Slip, when you slip off your diet, and then the next day you try to make up for it, uh, you're actually probably doing yourself more harm than good. What I would recommend is just get back on your diet and just get back on your your, your pre comp and don't go crazy with trying to make up for the the, pro, the whatever you just you know whatever you just did because the likelihood is you're going to overdo whatever you're trying to do, whether it be. You know, today I'm doing two and a half hours of cardio because yesterday I had a slice of pizza or I'm going to just not eat all day. Um, You could definitely use fasting as a tool, but when you're using it to like make up for something else, uh, bad habits uh, start to start to come out of that. So I would Mm. say just try to get back on your diet. Now, if you're super close to your contest, I'll let Adam answer that because. uh, Well, 
There, I think that's a yeah. I got nothing. I think that. <laughs> well, Justin, please skip. Um, no, I think that's incredible advice, Sal. And the the wh- the only thing I would really add to that is um, a little more specific on things that I learned, like as I went through this. If you actually are competing, right? I was blown away on how much I knowing what I know, and I still struggled with this because. You've you've resisted for so long for this, and this I, I believe this applies for other things than just contest prep for bodybuilding. I think this is very similar to people that are prepping for anything where they have to be on a strict diet for a certain amount of time. And what we tend to do is once we made it, we do this like celebration of like ah yeah I fucking made it, and they you know they binge. And once they once they start that, it's a it's a dangerous slippery slope, and so. What I had to do, and because I caught myself doing the same thing, like, oh, I'm going to eat like crazy post show, and you, and the hard, the hard part with post show stuff is, you look fucking awesome as you're eating bad food. Like the more bad food I ate for like the first 24 hours, the cooler I looked. Like I just, <laughs> I mean, I was so depleted that it, almost all those calories were going to like just filling my muscle bellies up. So I'm just getting like you're growing and I still got abs because you were so depleted. You're 2% body fat. It's not like you're going to go from 2 to 10% overnight, you know, but you definitely go from 2 to like 6% real quick. And so what I had to start to do was to treat after my show, I would have to mentally tell myself that my my dieting, my programming, all that stuff like that actually doesn't stop for until another week to two weeks later. And I would diet out of that. So and that's what reverse diet this this huge like mm-hmm. popularity in reverse dieting is all about is, you know, slowly reintroducing. Now that means doesn't mean you can't go have a nice burger after your show at that. Enjoy it. I mean, have a great big meal. One big huge meal post all that is not gonna kill you. But do not be fooled that it's not going to spike leptin, fill you all and just create like this your appetite is going to be roaring. And so if you have this fuck it, I'm over, I don't I'm not competing, I'm not focused anymore, and you lose focus real easily that can get out of control. So I would actually start to plan out, you know, day one at post show, day two, day three, day four, what it would look like. And I would allow myself calories and extra stuff and things that I hadn't been able to do on my contest prep, but I'd be more strategic about how I reintroduce it versus a free for all, which is what happens yeah. to most people when they fall off. So I think treating it with a little more um, structure, I think that is something that you can't don't just because they're asking about pre con pre competition dieting too. So like you're pre-con. you're getting ready for a show. Yeah, if you're if you're well, this is why I don't like cheat meals. Yeah, this is why I think it's stupid when coaches do this. Like, oh, you're gonna have a cheat day on this day. It's like no, it's not. You shouldn't even teach your your client that. It should be like, hey, we need a surplus of calories, and this is what we're going to do. But it's it's this culture that's been created in the compete in competitive world that drives me crazy. This, you know, hey, cheat day or cheat meal. Like, no, you idiot. Like, if if your coach is telling you that, what's the science behind why he's telling that? Well, it's because he's trying to fill you back up with more carbohydrates and calories. But in your head, you're connecting that with, oh, I've been good. Oh, I can cheat. And so you do this back and forth game, which is just a bad relationship with food. Really, if you're going, if you need a surplus of calories, you should still target getting it from healthy foods. And if it does end up mean a burger or whatever. And, but- and really, when I think one of the best things you could do when you're going into pre-competition uh, prep, uh, or if you compete on stage, uh, you know, and present your body, realize that all the things that you do to get on stage uh, really uh, push you towards bad relationships with exercise and food. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get those. Just understand that you're entering into an environment that really promotes that. It's an extreme. And, and be aware of it because then you can see what's happening to your mind and your body as you're going through this process. You know, I, I, uh, I trained a, a pageant competitor a long time ago. So, pageant world isn't that different from the competition world might even be worse in terms of like diet pills and and starving yourself and stuff like that and i could clearly see the the what it did to her mind as she would enter these contests and what would happen with how she would eat you know with her food and with her exercise and how she would treat them and my goal was it was always to make her aware of it like look you're you know you are going to be presenting yourself on a stage people are going to be you know, dissecting you both physically and verbally and all these other things. And that is that does, in some people, promote, um, you know, bad behavior or unhealthy behavior, I should say. 
and just be aware of what's going on because then you can you can catch it before it gets out of hand because you know already the question the question alone tells me that this particular individual is already in that bad state. To well, where this they, is, they slip off and then they you the don't, next day they try and make up for it by doing all this horrible well, stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you something that's going to sting a little bit. You don't belong competing. Sorry. It's a sport, just like anything else is. There's levels to that. Like It's just like I don't belong getting on a rugby field. You know why? Because I don't fucking know how to play the game. I'm no, I'm no, mm. I haven't trained for it. I'm not mentally, I'm not physically ready for it. What the fuck would I be doing on a rugby field? Just bottom line. Yeah. Now, maybe there's part of me that wants to go play rugby. So what would I do before that? I would do all the things to get me ready, to get ready just to even play the fucking sport. I wouldn't just hop on a field and compete with professionals or with people that are taking this on that. On that so you're saying, you're saying yeah. people with like really bad issues with if food. You, if it's you, probably not a good idea to compete. Yes, if you, have, if you have not honed in on your connection to food, if you can't, if you cannot diet for six to eight weeks, uh, very, very uh, strategically mm -hmm. strict and dialed in on your own with no competition, you haven't proven to yourself. Why would you even hop on a stage right. and compete against people for a trophy? And it, it's a sport. Well, people, it's a great point because I mean, yeah. look at the sport in general. It, it is the most. It's the glorification of like all your insecurities. Oh my it, god! It, dude. You're putting all your insecurities Big on time. display to get feedback from everybody else, which is exactly the wrong message. It, so if you don't recognize that it's a sport and it's a temporary thing that you're just going in to be like, oh cool, I did that, versus like I get my identif uh, my identity from this, it's just going to lead back into your your there, life now on the. Flip side, it could also be a tool to help uh, with those insecurities. Like, let's say you're somebody to who, address them, like to address them, yeah. to you know get in a certain shape. I don't and know. To, I disagree. It yeah. could no. It could be. I, 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 here's why I disagree. It could be a learning experience. Here, here's why I disagree. It's a tough argument. That's like like throwing me out on the rugby saying and saying, "Hey, you're probably going to learn a lot while you go out here and play. <laughs> you're going to break a leg." Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I, if you put me at a rugby game, I'm going to learn some shit. You're, I'm, I'm not going to like not learn anything. So just like you put somebody in that sport, they're going to learn something. But why would you do that? Yeah. There is no reason well, to, I, I guess for you I, to learn that way. So no, this is. I want to talk about this. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you went. We went this direction because this needs to be addressed because this is getting worse and the the this sport is becoming so popular. We just went and saw yeah. our boy Arya compete at a show that when I was competing just two and a half years ago was like dead. Like hardly anybody went to it. We went to the pre judging of it. And it was twice the size of a, that the night show that that was to you. So the sport is exploding. Everybody wants to be a men's physique athlete or a, or uh, or a women's bikini athlete right now. It's like the fucking cool thing to do. And the and what the problem I see with it is too many people are trying to do it that don't belong doing yeah. it yet, or they've if never you, learned how to do things a healthy way first. Yeah. So if you're going to go like to this extreme that in. You're not recognizing that it's a sport without the knowledge to then like transition back to a healthy lifestyle and a healthy identity for yourself. It, You're going to set yourself up when, for fucking horrible uh, uh, habits later on in life. I trained to compete for almost a year and a half before I decided to diet for a show. And that entire time, I was training my body and dieting. But during that entire time, I was I was learning as much as I could about a sport I was about to get in. And I'll never forget my buddies that were all like these big time coaches, right? For the big teams, I'm not going to say any roll anybody on the bus, but I've got multiple buddies that run these big teams for men's physique, bikini, and bodybuilders. And they were like, "Why don't get on get on the show now? Get on there, and you know the judges need to see you. And the more they see you, the better chances you have to work up the ladder." And I'm like, "I'm not ready for the sport. I'm still learning, like how I get ready, dieting wise, how I do this, what I need to, how long I need to, you know. I'm trying to figure out, okay, when I do this, this, and this, my body takes this long to respond. Like I'm paying attention to all that stuff, and I was practicing all those things before I even went in at my first amateur show. And so when I hear people that are like struggling with this like falling off the wagon in their preseason or uh, they are not even sure if you know 12 weeks is enough time for them to like you need to know all that stuff you should know what it takes you to get down to 3% body fat from wherever you are currently right now and you should practice that before you ever decide to step in an arena well let me ask you guys this do you think that these sports of where you're you know presenting yourself these aesthetic based uh, sports do you think they've done more damage Absolutely. Uh, then, then yeah. This is good, why I'm. Yeah. This is why I'm passionate. And that's. Don't get me wrong here. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, like, I, I mean, I know. I mean, I know how we'd answer, but I wanted to ask. Yeah, you guys. but this is. why I think that's. It's so important that people understand that I'm not like. 
Man, I know I was, there's, I'm probably offending a bunch of people that are like looking to sign up for their first show right now, and now I totally sh- poo pooed on their whole fucking deal, right? But here, here's the deal: like, it's it is a very unhealthy sport, one of the most unhealthy sports. But I I love it, and I think you can do it. It's like it's like CrossFit to me. Yeah, it's, it's like very much like CrossFit. It's like I love CrossFit too, and I love to watch it. I think it's an awesome sport, and I think it's so cool to see some of these athletes perform at the highest level. I'm I'm envious. I think it's yeah. a rad. But well, here here's my two like issues with both CrossFit and you know these these types of sports that like put you on display as far as like your physique is concerned. Uh, you're competing in lifestyle day to day like necessities, right? So I I need to eat every day. Like I need to be uh, doing some form of exercise, you know, every day uh, to be healthy. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make with CrossFit, I guess, is that um, there used to be a process to train for a sport, right? And there was a purity there as far as like, okay, I'm going to build myself up and I'm, there's, a, there's a whole process. And then now there's this endurance part and this is all leading up towards now I'm going to get in season, and now I'm competing at a very high level in season, right? So what what happened was there's it becomes convoluted. It becomes this muddied up process where now we're competing in what was supposed to be the preparation for the sport, uh, which is exactly how I see on you know on uh, like eating like eating stuff as being the preparation for me competing. Like this is like these these are habitual things that are healthy processes that now we turn them into a sport for what? Yeah, I yeah, I just I, have a big issue with it. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I think there's, I think there's definitely some good things it's brought to the to fitness. Oh, I, I, but it, I, but it I, changed my life. It's changed my life. It's made me a better coach. It's made me. I but, mean, I love I, it. So don't I, get me wrong. But definitely, if uh, if you have issues with food and issues with you know body image, uh, it'll probably push you in, in the wrong direction. It's a, it's not necessarily the greatest thing. Every show I've ever been to. You, I just hear the conversations people have, and I can see the way people look, and it's just, oh my god, this is well, really I, bad. This can I be don't really think bad. it's that hard. Okay, so and it's very simple, right? Like I feel like if you sh- anybody before they decide to compete, where you're going to get up, be compared by judges, stand next to other men and women, and be compared before you put yourself in that environment, you should at least just get yourself in the best shape of your life and see what that looks like and what it took to get there and what you learned along the way. That right there will at least give you a, a step up from 90% of these people that I see entering their first shows that just decide they're going to hire a coach and say, hey, because that's what's, that's what's happening right now. It's becoming so popular that someone goes like, I want to do that, and I believe I got the discipline to do that. Who's your coach? Who, who helped you out? Then they go hire that motherfucker who has no well, business here, helping Here's what you got to consider. You got to consider the damage that you're going to do to your body because you do, you do create, even if you do it right, you are going to damage your body getting in that kind of condition. And so you need to know that and you know how to come out of that. That's number one. Because I've already now seen few several women who I've, I'm working with who've done some pretty bad damage to their metabolic systems, to their gut, to you know to their health in general. And number two, realize that there's going to be some, you have to withstand some damage to your psyche uh, because you're going to restrict so, 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 so much because you have a specific date, because it's so it has to be so perfect at the time you, when you go off and that motivation is gone, that competition's over, it's going to flip you a little bit into a tailspin. And so be be very aware when you enter into that world, uh, you know, with, that you're going to be doing those things so that you can at least approach it with with a, with a, with a little bit more of awareness. Well, then you're also going to be judged by somebody who's going to tell you that your lats aren't big enough, your legs are too yeah. small. You know, if you're, you're not emotionally ready to handle yeah, criticism. That's right. It's not a fucking sport for you. And not and not only that, but to be okay with it, it could be a bunch of bullshit too. Because yeah. the, the judge is so probably, subjective. The judge could be sleeping with one of the fucking girls that's up on stage, and he cares more about her getting a trophy than he cares about you getting yeah, a trophy. Right. And even though you fucking have a better physique, you may not get it, and you may be told it's because you don't have round enough shoulders. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to be ready for all that and be okay with that and like knowing what you're getting into. And I think the, just the the first prerequisite to that is like just diet yourself, just train, just hold yourself accountable to this and and see the pitfalls, see the challenge that you have so you're aware of it when you decide to get in, go and play the sport. I mean, like prepare yourself a little bit. Cat Bowl is asking, what is the most important aspect of personal care? Personal care? Cat bowl. Cat our own oh personal care. Wow. It's, what does it say? What is our most, what is the, what Im- most, is the important? most important aspect of personal care? Uh, 
I would say. Are we personal? Each one personal? Or is no, this like I think a, the. Maybe just what we think. Is there a the? Is there a the? You know, I would that? say there's. There, I'm trying to think of something that would kind of encompass everything, right? And I think uh, really, really understanding and caring for yourself uh, on a true and accurate uh, level, because that will guide your decisions. That will guide your food. That'll guide your nutrition. That'll guide the relationships that you allow yourself to have. You know, a lot of people are in these relationships with either friends or, you know, significant others where they're destructive. Uh, you know, they, they, they take away from you. They, they beat you down. They can be abusive. And the, really the core, the, the, the core of that is you don't care about yourself enough to not be around that person. That's really what the, the bottom line is. And, and so, and I know it's a lot of personal responsibility. It sucks because people feel, feel stuck in some of these situations. So the most important aspect is caring. Just really, really caring about yeah. yourself is yeah. where, I, where I would put it. I mean, that's funny because in, in a true, in a true like, way. Yeah. I was going to go the opposite way. And, you and want I, like more physical stuff? No, no, I was going to say, no, originally, yeah, I was actually, originally I was thinking like uh, baby wipes and making sure you take care of your asshole. That's what I thought you meant like, <laughs> yeah. you know, per, like uh, hygiene. I know, and, like, exactly. Taking, this is like a hygiene but you, question you, to me. You, you took it like as in personal care. I'm trying as, to think of something that'll cover all that. Uh, you yeah, know well, I guess that's maybe been, the probably the question is this because went deep man he's no he's probably right because yeah. i know our topics lately have been kind of this direction of like awareness and mm -hmm. you know taking care of yourself mm -hmm. and uh you know here's one i so first of all a great book i was uh, like trim them nose hairs <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> you know what I mean? the subtle art of not giving a fuck i just posted it on my instagram uh recently and i think that's an excellent book when you ask a question like this and actually what i liked about the book it was quite opposite of what most uh self-help type books would be like where it is, you know, love yourself, this and that. And it's, it was more like, stop giving a fuck, you know, stop giving a fuck about everything and letting all those things affect you and embrace your insecurities and embrace the things that challenge you most. And so m my advice to the best thing you could do for personal care, and I think uh, I think Justin is really good at this too. Like, I, I well, I think all of us are. I think I, that's one of the things that we're, uh, I think are attracted to each other is that mm. everybody is very growth minded and mm. it's we face the things that we know we're not good at. So I am not afraid. I love it's crazy, but you have to learn to flip this on its head because in my early 20s, I did not love this. I did not love being told that I wasn't good at something or mm. my my all the things that I was insecure about. Right. Or that I whatever, whatever it was, I didn't like it when I was younger. Now as an adult, I love it. I embrace it. Tell well, I me. I think you build up the resiliency towards it, right? Y yes. And, and well, it takes you, time. You know, it creates growth. Yeah. And that's what you, it, it's, it's, you, it takes you, you know, it's going to take you, which was uh, a lot of the history behind the company level up that Justin and I were first originally started before we met Sal was, and, and Doug was, you know, that's what level up stood for was that I was always looking for this next level of growth and trying to put myself in these uncomfortable positions mm -hmm. to level up. And so I feel like, you know, the best thing you could do to care about yourself is to actually be seeking out these things that you're most uncomfortable with mm -hmm. and facing them. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we spend so much time trying to hide or avoid them or, you know, or, or ignore them or uh, deny them. And instead of that, like, oh, wow, like really pay attention to things that make you, that state change you, that make you feel mm -hmm. different, whether it be positive or negative, do not neglect to pay attention to that and then address it. And by address it, I mean like internally address it, like, whoa, Sal just said something. And understand something. how you're addressing it each time, you know, like what what steps you're taking and, and um, and then you, you can really start to see how this all plays out, you know, as, as you pay more close attention to your everyday habits, your everyday decision making, um, you know, the things that somebody says that affects you a certain way, like how you react, like all these things, it, you just start to, to, to really take a critical look and, and, and dive deeper as far as like what makes you and like how how you interact with your environment. And, and once you start paying closer attention to that, it's like, it's, it's very eye opening. And then you see what benefits you the most. I mean, it's, it's, it's right there in front of you. It takes a, it, it does take the awareness to be able to say to yourself, like, I'm not good at this. Or yeah. I don't like this. Cause there's a lot of things we avoid that we don't realize uh, that we avoid. That's a really hard part to do. That's yeah. a very, very difficult one. Like, you know, I have a, I have a tendency to do my taxes on the last fucking day. I do this every year. Right. And I had to really talk to him. I had to this realization like, yeah, I hate them so bad, 
but I do them anyway. Uh, why don't I just do them? Why don't you just do them early? Yeah, why yeah. don't I? And, 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 and just do it, like kind of just force myself and face that type of thing and get more organized with it. And there's a lot of things that, you know, that I have in my life like that where I'll put things off or I won't do them because I don't like doing them or they make me uncomfortable. Uh, and now what I'm trying to do is, okay, this really makes me uncomfortable. Got to have to do it anyway. I'm going to just do it right well, now. And, let's and go boy, f- does it feel better. Let's go further though, like so, which I know you have this ability to do that. I think where people really miss is because of all that. So let's say that Sal's thing, right? Then what normally happens is it puts him in a bad mood and then maybe he he snaps at like his wife or his, his kid or his partner and he is blaming that person for whatever stupid little thing they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. And in reality, it's really this thing that's buried deep that it's a, something that he procrastinates, he puts off that's now affecting him that way. That's what I mean by because it causes you some form of anxiety. Yes, that's, you know, so you like you're you're it, it's like sort of a protection process where it's like you're not going to address it, not going to address it, not going to address it till now I have to address it. Versus because it's like you know, taxes, especially I can kind of voice into this because it definitely does the same thing with me, but uh, I, I figured it out. You know, it's like it, 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 it's the unknown of it, you know? And so once you, once you really start to, to dive into uh, knowing it more in depth as far as, okay, Absolutely. here's the process, you know, okay, I got to write this all out first. So next year I'm going to get on top of this early, you know, step one is, is to fill it all out, you know, send it off to this person, do like, and you start managing. So now it becomes more known and more expected and you get into those numbers of like, so it's not so uncertain because the uncertainty of it is what gives the most anxiety, right? Like what? It, oh my God. Well, now I'm going to have to pay. Well, let's talk about too, how amazing that feels when you flip that on its head too. Like yeah. when you actually turn it into a strength of yours, that now it's something that you used to procrastinate, you avoid, you didn't like that. You said, you know what? I'm going to fucking embrace this. I'm going to solve this. I'm going to be ready for this. And then the following year when that comes around and the feeling that you'll get, you'll be like, whoa, that was fucking A. It's way better. I allowed that to, I allowed all that stress on myself because it's something that either one was an insecurity or I don't want to deal with, whatever it may be, whatever the reason doesn't matter. It's the fact that that's something that's causing you. And this is what self-care is really about, in my opinion, is learning to see these things that create shifts in your state and then learning and backtracking and diving into mm-hmm. what caused it and then what can I do differently what are the of favorable reactions what's the better process yeah. I can utilize with you this, you yeah. learn to do that I'll tell you right now like you'll be taking real good fucking care of yourself or you could just get the wipes yeah, or that just wipes yeah. check it out mindpumpmedia.com 30 days of coaching still for free and we've now added studies to back up a lot of the things that we talk about in the 30 days of coaching that's all at mindpumpmedia.com also if you want to ask us a question and you want us to answer it on our Qua episodes, this is what you do. Go to Instagram, go to Mind Pump Media, and uh, post a question underneath the Qua memes. We post them up. Uh, hashtag Qua. Uh, hashtag, hashtag Qua. We post qua. them up uh, like twice a week. And so ask a question underneath it. If we like it, then we will uh, talk about it on our show. Um, and you can find my personal page at Mind Pump Sal, Adam's at Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.